Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Juma mabarak to you all. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. In Ahmaduhu, in Astain, who in Astaufiru, when I would be lah, him in Shuruli and Fusina, and say Yati Amalina. May Yadhila, who fella mudilla, who may you lil who fella hadila, or Shadula, Ilaha in the law, Wahdahula, Sharikala, or Shadu Anna Muhammadan, Abduhu or Sulu, Sullah, Allah, who send them. We send all praise to Allah, from whom we seek help and forgiveness, we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides would never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. And we bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O oh, ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves. And do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul uqtatan min lisani yafqaw qawli subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana innaka anta al-halim al-hakim. Pray may Allah open my chest, uh, loosen the knots of my tongue, uh, and make easy for me this task that uh, this, these words may be understood and all glory belongs to Allah. Glory is only for Allah. Uh, it only belongs to Allah. Uh, we have no knowledge except that which Allah has given us because Allah is the one uh, who is the all-knowing and the all-wise. It's been the Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessings to all of you, wherever you may be, uh, whether here in the space or seeing this later at another time. Uh, blessings to you, especially as we've concluded and wrapped up the month of Ramadan, uh, celebrated the blessed days of Eid, and now uh, in the uh, blessed month of Shawwal as well. <laughs> so we wanted to talk a little bit about this element of uh, reset and renewal, especially as we've come out of a month of uh, deep uh, connection in different ways, whether that was a communal connection or spiritual connection, uh, but a, a month that was marked by uh, not just the the Quran, not just the prayers and the recitations and uh, the iftars and all of that, um, but marked with so many different layers with respect to uh, holistic experience. And thinking now, you know, we've come into a space where we might feel <clears throat> having gone through maybe such a rigorous time or such a fast paced time with Ramadan, uh, things may feel a little bit more comfortable now things may feel like they've kind of gone into uh maybe a a, a lower uh grade of sorts or you know in terms of uh from like a, a gear in terms of driving it's gone from a lower gear it's not we're not on fifth gear anymore we're, we're kind of a little bit more cruise controlling right now uh, and so we may feel a little bit comfortable but thinking about the month of shawal is a time for us to uh, reflect on because it's marked by the beginning of Eid, which is a bit of a reset. It's a bit of a start of a new, uh, a new season. Um, it's it's a time for us to get things going again after having gone through uh, Ramadan, which yeah, in in its its own word and the etymology of its word connotates a kind of burning, a a, a type of uh, as if you're in the uh, a, a metal that's being purified within a furnace, a very uh, difficult type of. Uh, season that's being that's being endured, but one that is intended to purify, one that is intended to make better. Uh, and now you're going into a new season, a new space where uh, you're a new you in a sense. And going forward, how we can think about this in in some way. But one thing that uh, was sticking out to me as we were thinking about uh, looking at what does it mean to renew? What does it mean to reset? What, Especially in this particular time, you know, we can always hearken back to what we did during Ramadan. We can hearken back to what was going on during uh, Eid and, and everything that's there. But now in a space where we may not have the same type of rigidity to us or the same type of discipline that might come about, or even the same kind of communal participation that we've been used to seeing, how can we uh, be able to follow through with the changes that we may have made in Ramadan with how we've been going through in a sense maybe our Ramadan was not what we had wanted it to be maybe we were working at it in, in a certain way and it just uh it had not uh finished the way that we had wanted um but maybe we did some things in Ramadan we were like we want to continue to do these things we incorporate some good habits incorporate some good um attributes different things like that but how do we sustain those how do we continue to make those go forward and one of the things that made me think about 
uh, you know, in the context of this renewal, in the context of this reset, uh, Surah Al-Muzammil, um, which is the 73rd chapter of the Qur'an, uh, it's one of the earliest uh, chapters of the Qur'an, but it's very interesting in terms of how it talks. It, 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 it speaks to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, similarly to how Surah Al-Mudathir addresses the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you who are covered up and bundled up. Um, you know, it's, it, it also addresses uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, yeah, you had mazambil, the one, you, oh, you who are, who are wrapped up, that you're you're covered up, and, and the, the Surah itself talks about uh, supplication and prayer, especially during the the night, uh, during uh, the 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 layl in at the time of the, for for tahajjud at the time of uh, night, um, during uh, you know when when it's the uncomfortable portion in terms of being asleep and then waking up for prayer. But thinking about in this aspect as it's addressing the process, on that you who have wrapped yourself up, you who have covered yourself up, that. You're pretty comfortable right now. You may be bundled. Uh, you may uh, be in your bed asleep. Um, you know it's, the the prophethood has been has been given to you. It's it's, it's something that uh, is not just an easy task. It's not just something that has come without any kind of repercussion or any type of difficulty that's there. But uh, you know now there's there's something uh, there's a bit of a it's a spiritual alarm clock of sorts. And thinking for us that as we're coming out of Ramadan, where we may feel like hey. Uh, the things that we may have been doing during or before Ramadan, the things that we may have been causing us a bit of a distance between ourselves and our deen, ourself and Allah. Now we're going into Ramadan and uh, in a space where we can try and actively uh, step away from that and feel like we're, we're able to leave off those bad habits, leave off uh, some of those uh, things about us that we may not uh, want to do during Ramadan, uh, that we may be uh, not so comfortable with doing in those spaces. And so we adapt this mindset adapt this way of kind of going but thinking about after ramadan you know the world still is the way it might be and in the, in, in the way that it was at uh and and for us going forward with respect to how life is is coming at us it may it, it's going to get difficult in different ways you know there's there's uh not just the challenges within our own lives but there's also just challenges within the world around um as as we you know, follow different global events and different things kind of happening. The, the world's not getting much easier in a sense. And so it's it's almost incumbent upon us to not necessarily uh, zone ourselves out from all of this, but now coming back into the world, how do we sustain ourselves? How do we sustain when we don't have the same maybe uh, communal support, that we don't have the same regimen, that we don't have the same uh, type of uh, fervor and the same aura of around a month that we did uh, when we were in Ramadan, now it may feel like we're a little bit more on our own, and so how do we kind of get to you know where what we where, where we wanted to be, uh, but also sustain what we maybe we had built and we want to continue with, and so thinking about with respect to how the Prophet is is being addressed in this space, but uh, not necessarily saying that he was in the, in a very comfortable space. You know, he was of course understanding in the context in which this is coming from. This isn't the first revelation. This is we see how the first revelation. Uh, impact of the process. Some I mean, it was a very shaky and very, uh, you know, very heavy incident. It was, it was something that was very uncomfortable. Um, it was something that, uh, you know, caused distress in different ways, and and obviously very weighty in that aspect. But thinking about uh, in the sense that the comfort that's being addressed is in the, in the aspect of sleep. That you know, this the message that's being given to you, the role that's being given to you. Uh, of course, it's going to bring about the difficulties that are in the world. It's going to bring about challenges in the world. But in doing so, the, uh, the 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 worship in and of itself, the faith in and of itself, uh, is not just one that's going to be completely cozy and comfortable like a blanket. The faith, taking on the mantle of faith, practicing your faith, may at times also feel uncomfortable, may at also times feel a bit discomfortable, but it has a twofold benefit in a sense, and maybe even more so, not just in the spiritual dimension of the spiritual reward, the spiritual benefit of participating and doing your worship, but on the flip side as well, what does it build with respect to your own resilience, with respect to your own discipline, with respect to you being prepared and formed for is what is going to be and what is a very ugly world, a very difficult life in different ways. And so thinking about in this sense, in the in the comfort of sleep, one of the, maybe the few comforts process some enjoyed and not not to the maybe even the fullest extent like many of us do, um, because you see how he had lived, how how modest his livings were. He didn't have like a giant sort of mattress or like a sleep number mattress with a big blanket or anything like that. He had a very simple living. Um, but 
in that space of comfort, in that space of just, you know, minor comfort of sleep, being commanded to stand up for prayer at, at a portion of the night, you know, and, 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 and being able to do so at an extended period. Again, thinking about it wasn't just, hey, you know, get up and do a little bit of this and then be down. But uh, as Allah tells us that uh, in the Quran, you know, rise for the night, whether half of it or even if it's just a little bit or, you know, prolong it a little more, but continue to keep that relationship with the Quran, continue to recite the Quran and not just, uh, just, you know, speeding through it as oftentimes we may feel like we do uh, in the rush of life or whatnot, but to recite it with tartil, to recite it uh, as if you're you're uh, giving each letter of uh, a word, you're giving each letter its proper due, you're giving each vowel its proper due. And so uh, that this is not just being done because we're just toying with you, but that this is being done because we're going to soon charge you with something that's going to be enormous, a important responsibility of conveying your message that we see how the Prophet's period of da'wah um, was both had a private dimension with respect to uh, who he's talking to, who he's spreading this message to internally within his close circles, within his family and whatnot, but will be prepared to share this message with the people around. And that's when things will really, really get difficult. Um, but thinking about how this is being done as a way to help prepare the Prophet some for the world uh, and the challenges that's going to be brought. It's not frivolous. It's not aimless. It's something that we may feel like, why would somebody stand up in the middle of the night? They're enjoying their sleep. They're enjoying their comfortable time for rest. Why wake them up and just disrupt them and, you know, uh, put them in this situation? But you see the aspect that uh, with respect to ritual, with respect to uh, ibadah, that it's not just a spiritual benefit uh, in Islam. It has a holistic benefit. It's spiritual, but it also has a worldly component. It also has a lived embodied experience. It has a, also a benefit in that aspect as well. So thinking about that you're getting up at night, but also as uh, as it says that, you know, getting up at night, uh, getting up for the salat, now getting up for that tahajjud is the most effective way of subduing oneself. It is the most, it's the most upright way to acquire, you know, firm control of one's actions, to uh, really become disciplined in that sense. Uh, but also thinking about for the Prophet the, the weight that he's been given, the task that he's been given is, is like on any other that that is uh, that is given out and thinking about what he needs within his own toolkit because it's going to be an even more isolating job. Even if his family is there, he has some support systems that are there. At the end of the day, he's the one receiving revelation. At the end of the day, he's the one who has to convey it. And so it disproportionately will fall, the burden of that responsibility falls on him. And so thinking about how for him, Prayer is being given as this kind of respite, but again, in a space of comfort, being arose, uh, being arisen to say, "Hey, we got, we got to get, got to get you moving, got to get doing, got to get you uh, to be doing something that's not just aimless, but something that is going to help you sustain uh, that which we had initially given to you, that which the, the responsibility that we had given to you before the revelation that we had been given. This is a part of that process. This is a part of your formation. It acknowledges that during the day." You've got a lot of commitments. You're busy during the day. You have, uh, you know, your job. You've got all these different things. You got to feed your family. You've got to do all these different things that are there. And and Allah recognizes that for human beings. Allah recognizes that on Juma. That when you hear the call for Juma, come to prayer. Um, and 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 leave leave off all business. Come to prayer. But when the when when the salah is finished, when Juma is finished, um, when the prayer is finished. Go back to your business. You know, you, you Islam is a practical religion. It, it it works holistically. It recognizes you have mouths to feed. It recognizes all of these different things, um, and so uh, it it states as well for the Prophet Son that recognize you have engagements during the day. During the day, it might be hard to do this worship, but do it at the night. Do it in the night when uh, you have spent all that time with the world. You have spent all that time around with the people who need you, but dedicate this portion for Allah, and you'll see that it's not an aimless thing. It's something that. Uh, is actually going both ways. It's benefiting you spiritually, but it's also preparing you for something that uh, is going to be when the goings get rough. And so uh, we see in the sense that uh, with respect to this task that's being given, that Allah has for our Prophet is, you know, preparing him for this moment, is, 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 you know, shaking up a little bit of that space where he's comfortable and enjoying just a little bit of comfort, but interjecting with respect to this, our faith practice, what would be something that uh, is not just spiritually beneficial for him, but something that's going to help him for the road ahead. And we see that 
you know, for the rest of his life as the prophet, as the prophet to end, uh, as a steward of his community, it didn't get any easier. You know, it didn't just it come with the difficulty of uh, op- opposition of people, uh, you know, uh, hating on him or persecuting him or doing anything. It also came with really, uh, you know, realities, uh, difficult realities of our world with respect to loss of loved ones, um, with respect to uh, different relational losses with respect to different ailments, uh, and seeing how all of these have connections and roots within the prayer, that these are all outlets with respect to which the prayer can be utilized as a space to uh, connect back to one's creator, because each of these moments or each of these traumas, each of these difficult things are isolating in and of themselves, they're damaging in and of themselves. And so prayer being a space where uh, these can be reflected on, contemplated on, meditated on, but also uh, implored on with respect to uh, asking and seeking uh, help from the divine. And what's beautiful about this chapter, inshallah, just as we kind of close it in, in the sense that we skip ahead to, to towards the end of it, that, uh, you know, in the final verse, Allah tells uh, the Prophet Sallallahu that, you know, with respect to the night prayers that are being done, um, that Allah, uh, you know, determines the night and the day and knows that, you know, you or maybe speaking to the Prophet, but speaking especially to us, speaking to the Muslims, speaking to the people around the Prophet, you may not be able to pray as long as you uh, want or may that we have ordained for you. But, you know, Allah has turned to us with mercy that recite as much of the Quran as possible. And think about when we think about where we are right now, we're coming out of the month of the Quran. We're coming out of Ramadan, uh, which is the season, the space and, and marked by uh, it's a month marked by the revelation of the Quran that uh, recite as much of the Quran as possible, that that is as easy for you as possible, that, you know, not just recite all the Quran in the sense, all right, let's let's kind of just make it X's and O's, but recite then as much as is possible. You know, Allah knows that your condition he knows that some of you might be ill. Some of you may be uh, moving out about in the land and doing your business and on work or doing other things that are there that might be difficult. Others of you may be striving in the cause of Allah, but recite as much of the Quran as is possible. Um, but uh, in addition to that, if you're not able to, again, do these prayers that are at night, going into that space uh, uh, of waking yourself up in a, dif- a difficult difficult manner, um, there's other ways to try to at least uh, be able to uh, scratch at and try to get those types of rewards, but also to, to build that discipline that uh, maybe you have a difficult time waking up after you've been asleep for some time for the Hajjud, but what is it like to build in a discipline that before you go to sleep, to if not do that prayer, uh, to also uh, dedicate some time just to reading the Quran, to to reconnecting with the message of Allah, with the, uh, with the speech of Allah. But it says as well that uh, if, you know, this is, this is what's kind of there um, and, and lift it up, but you should and you shall observe the prayer. Um, the the five times salah that you're that that's something that's obligatory upon you as a Muslim to build that into your schedule to do that um, continue to pay the zakah continue to pay uh, you know the sadaqah continue to be a charitable person um, and you'll see that with respect to the benefits that come about that whatever good you send on before yourselves you will find it with Allah as the best of things meriting the greatest reward and seek protection of Allah with Allah uh, and that verily Allah is the most protecting, the most merciful, but thinking about in the sense that as we are going into the space outside of Eid, as we're getting settled into the the throes of life and the regular parts of life, our work schedule may feel a little bit different. We, our appetite may feel like we're getting a lot more hungry, uh, a lot easier. We didn't have that same discipline that we feel like we did during Ramadan. Uh, and life is going to be getting challenging here. Uh, but it doesn't mean that our faith practice should also start to turn into being something uh, a lot more uh, uh, lackada- la- lackadaisical in a sense. It shouldn't be this this aspect of just uh, getting really uh, comfortable, being very lax about what we're going to be doing, but it should actually prompt us to say in what ways our faith practice can be something that allows us or something that tells us to, uh, you know, actually uh, get a little bit uncomfortable with respect to our routine, our schedule. We saw just this past month, we were getting a little bit uncomfortable with leaving off some food for uh, you know, the majority of the day from uh, sun up to sundown, you know, we left off food and, and water. Uh, and 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 that may have felt uncomfortable in a sense, but we saw the benefits of it, not just in the from a health standpoint, not just from a spiritual standpoint, but maybe holistically with respect to what fasting has to offer us. And similarly, when we think about other elements of our faith as 
uh, Surah Al-Muzammil lifts up of the night prayer of a time when we might just be getting uh, some wanting to just get some R&R, &R, just get some sleep. The benefit of uh, disrupting that sleep, the, the benefit of uh, making ourselves, disciplining ourselves to get up, uh, whether or not in the middle of it or even just before it or whatnot, but to incorporate that prayer at a time when we may feel like we are just starting to, uh, you know, segue into a space where we're, uh, we've worked all day, we've done something, we don't have much energy, and we're just going to do uh, absolutely nothing. But thinking about what does that, if fasting in and of itself, as as it may feel like an inconvenience, it may look like an inconvenience on, on black and white, but if it, it tangibly has all these different benefits it has to offer us during Ramadan, spiritual and, and, and you know, embodied in this sense and, and real in this world, uh, what benefit does it have for us to engage in something like the night prayer uh, for the Prophet Sallallahu who was uh, taking in just that small moment of comfort there, but to be able to arise uh, at night, to be able to commit some of that time at, at in the evening time that usually we just have to ourselves to commit some of that time to Allah. What does that have to offer? And as the Surah Muzammil relates, that you're gonna things are the road ahead is gonna get difficult. Life is gonna start to really take some twists and turns, and it's gonna have different potholes, and it. it's gonna get pretty pretty heavy. Um, but that. This uh, th this prayer, getting up at night, getting building this discipline, building this routine, um, you will you will you will see the benefits of it. You'll see the fortifications of it. Um, and so, thinking about that as we are resetting, as we are renewing, uh, you know, ourselves in this month of Shawwal, in this month in which we are starting a new season, uh, we're we're coming out of Ramadan, uh, however we might have, but we're we're, we're turning a new chapter uh, into this book. In, in what ways we can continue some of that element. And, you know, it, it doesn't just have to be with respect to now uh, what exactly I did in Ramadan. I need to do exactly that. I have to be fasting every single day. I need to do that because that's the, that's the routine I built. But think about, no, all elements of our faith, all elements of our ibadah uh, inherently within our life may feel uncomfortable in different ways in, 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 in certain settings. To, to pray at the designated times throughout the day might feel a little bit uncomfortable because we might be working a job in which we, we it's it's hard to take that time out. Or it may be like, where would I even pray? It's going it to be weird or whatnot. But think about how each of these things, when we make that time for Allah, when we make that time for our ibadah, when we make that time to connect with our Creator, we see not only the spiritual benefits that will come from that, but we'll also see how it will uh, impact us, benefit us in uh, our daily lives, in our uh, work, in our social lives, in our relationships, in uh, all of these different things. We'll start to see how this benefits us tangibly. So uh, as we go forward, inshallah, looking at resetting, renewing the space, uh, maybe we reset and we renew our own connection with Allah. What were our factory defaults? What are the basic things that Allah has told us that uh, the merits of waking up at night, that if you're not able to do so, read as much of the Quran as you can. You know, do uh, you, you understand you have capacities. We understand you have different abilities. We have, understand you're coming from different spaces, but do as much as you can. Just push that barrier a little bit, but know that your baseline is of the prayer. Your baseline is of that charity. Your baseline is of uh, those fard ayn, of those requirements, of those pillars of our faith. Um, but thinking about how we can renew and how we can reset those basic practices to then allow us to optimize uh, for an even more effective way uh, of operating in this world. So may Allah make it uh, possible for us. May Allah enable us to do so. Uh, may Allah enable us to uh, be able to not just reset and renew in this month of Shawwal, uh, a month where we can uh, fast as well. We can continue to uh, build off of the routine that we had established in Ramadan, but a month in which we can uh, continue to grow and connect with our creator uh, and appreciate the uh, blessings that have been given to us in the means of faith, in the matters of faith, with respect to our prayer, with respect to the charity, with respect to uh, the reading of the Quran, that where we may not see it as such because it may take time away from something else that may our hearts and our eyes and our ears and all of our senses be open to see how this actually will and is of a benefit for us, both in this life and in the life to come. Uh, and may Allah uh, also, and as, as we uh, close today, May Allah allow us to not forget those who are suffering around the world, those who are in Sudan, those who are in uh, Pakistan, Palestine, in uh, the UAE, uh, victims of floods, victims of uh, natural disasters, victims of oppression, terrorism, genocide all across the world. Uh, we ask Allah to 
ease their suffering. We ask Allah to bring them expedient comfort, but we ask Allah to not let us be complacent, not let us be those who look away, but be those who are enabled and empowered uh, and imbued to help, uh, even if just through our prayers, even if just through our uh, words, even if just through um, that which we keep silent, but enable us to do more than we feel like we have the capacity to do and make us the uh, the alleviators and the bringers of such comfort, justice, and relief for them. Uh, may Allah forgive us for all our shortcomings. And we close with uh, a, uh, we pray for uh, to, to Allah to send blessings and to send our blessings as well upon the Prophet Sallallahu uh, and upon the Prophet Sallallahu family and all of those in the family and the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, may Allah unite us all one day. Uh, may it, may it, inshallah be so. And Jumal Mubarak to you all. Uh, again, uh, think about how we can continue to build off that spirit of Ramadan. Ramadan might have passed, but the spirit of it can continue for us going forth. Inshallah. Wa akhru wa da'wana anil hamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.